Lynn Seymour. I am a retired psychiatric nurse practitioner who has become fascinated by Scientology and its mind control methods. Fifteen years ago, I was teaching psychiatric nursing at a state university and had two young men in my class. They kept to themselves, did not mingle with the other students, and seemed uncomfortable with the class material as well as the clinical experience in my psychiatric nursing course. After the final exam, they told me their beliefs about psychiatry, which were, of course, shocking to me. They confessed that they thought all psychiatrists were evil and were intentionally trying to harm people. They asked me if I had ever heard of Scientology and invited me to their church. I politely declined, and as they were walking away, they turned and said, Oh, she's just a wog. At the time, I had no idea what that word meant. Do you know if Scientology in the past has actually sent some of its parishioners or CIRC members to universities to become nurses? This is a chilling thought, as I do not think that the philosophy or practice of nursing would be compatible with the belief system and practices of the cult of Scientology. In all the years that I was in Scientology, I never heard of anything like being uh, having Scientologists sent in to learn about psychiatry or take university classes or get a degree in, sci in psychiatry. That just, I never heard of that. And that would be so counter and contrary to all of Scientology's beliefs and their entire structure that I don't think that's an approach that they would take. Um, I do know Scientologists who have been uh, take, who have had to take uh, university classes in psychiatry or psychology in order to get credits as part of a standard lineup in order to get their degrees. And um, they always protested it and, you know, hated it and talked about it and criticized it. But they had to take the class or they couldn't get their degree. And so that's, that, that may have been the case here. You mentioned a psychiatric nursing class, which, which seems to me to be more than just a general psychology or psychiatry class, so I'm a little curious about it, actually. Um, this was 15 years ago. I, I don't know where this was or, or you know, any, what university we're talking about here. So it's really impossible for me to say that it wasn't a, some kind of a covert op on the part of the Scientologists, but if so, you'd think they'd be a little bit more circumspect about it and wouldn't just come up to you and, you know, be critical and invite you to the church. Um, I just, I've just never heard of anything like that. Scientology hates psychiatry. They don't just feel neutral about it or feel like it's sort of, you know, not a, a very good thing. They hate it. There, there really isn't a stronger word to use for, for their attitudes and, and ideas about psychiatry because Hubbard makes, it minces no words in talking about the destructiveness of psychiatry and he's talking about psychiatry as of 1950, 1960s you know, one flew over the cuckoo's nest kind of psychiatry is, is what he's talking about. And there has been a, a lot of change, a lot of reform in psychiatry since then, as I came to learn after I got out of Scientology. So I can talk, you know, about the, the horrors of psychiatry quite intelligently uh, for, you know, for a number of hours, because I know a lot about its history and, and some of the awful stuff that it used to do. And it was awful stuff, you know, and I'm not necessarily really, you know, gung-ho about psychiatry now, but I don't hate it anymore, and I would never uh, hesitate to refer somebody to a psychologist or a psychiatrist if I felt that they, the situation warranted it or they needed it, because, you know, Scientology sure as hell isn't filling the gap. They're not treating any mentally insane people. They have no plan and no idea of what to do with insane people. And when you look at cases like Lisa McPherson, who died in the late 80s under Scientology care when she was clearly having a psychotic break, uh, the Scientologists have no concept of how to actually deal with mentally ill people. So they're the last people who should be saying anything about what should or shouldn't be done with uh, people who have mental illness.